In this video, we'll be taking apart the Nokia XR21. If you're interested in seeing the drop test I did on this phone, you can click on the link in the iCard on the top corner, or you can check in the description. Also, if you need any tools, there'll be links for them in the description. We'll need to start off by removing the SIM tray. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic and rubber back plate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you only take the back plate off in order to replace that. There are 19 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There's a gray antenna line drawn on this top plastic cover, some graphite film top transfer heat, as well as the dual LED flash board. Here's a look at the other side. There's another antenna line drawn on this bottom plastic cover. And here's a look at the bottom speaker. The battery cable needs to be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard as well as the charger port. And this flex cable is for the NFC antenna which sits on top of the battery. There are also three coaxial cables on the main board which need to be disconnected by popping them off. This protective tape needs to be peeled back, so we can disconnect the flex cable for this button on top, as well as the front facing camera. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Taking a closer look at the main board, there's an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, and the connector for this camera can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's some copper tape on the front shield top transfer heat, and the secondary microphone located here, which is that gold color piece. And here's another look with the shield cover removed. Looking at the other side, the proximity sensor is located on the top corner, and there's thermal paste on the back shield top transfer heat. Once the back shields have been removed, we can see a lot more thermal paste on top of the processor and these two chips. Here's a better look at the processor with the thermal paste removed. There are three more Phillips screws which need to be removed.
Here's a better look at the subboard. And the primary microphone is located over here. The SIM reader is located on the other side. And here's a look at the charger port. And there's a red rubber gasket around it. Here's a better look at the NFC antenna. In order to remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help us pry it off. Here's a better look at the 4800 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen, which is right up to an opening in the mid frame. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the top plastic cover and the cover itself. You'd have to disconnect the screen flex cable, the flex cable for the charger port and the battery, pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable. You would also have to peel off this adhesive pull pouch for the battery. And then you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom and it's held down with some adhesive. There's a small antenna board on the bottom corner, which is held down with a Phillips screw. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located over here. If you need to replace that, you have to gently peel it off from the frame and remove this plastic bracket inside of the frame, which is then give you access to pulling that out. The flex cable for this button is located on this side. In order to replace that, you would have to peel off the flex cable and remove the plastic bracket which is inside of the frame in order to release it. The 64 megapixel primary camera is located here, which is also held on with some adhesive. And the same goes for the headphone jack here and the earpiece speaker over here. Also, none of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. Once the thermal paste has been removed over here on the midframe, we can see this copper heat pipe which runs underneath the motherboard as well as the battery. Now compared to the Nokia XR20, the size of the copper heat pipe looks to be the same. However, this cutout or opening in the mid frame on the XR21 is smaller than the XR20. The frame itself is as strong and sturdy as the XR20. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.